Uh, okay, tonight's uh, talk is going to be about the change in concentration um, with uh, the change in time. And so um, we've been talking about rate laws and um, equations and how we can determine that. And we're going to focus just tonight on first order reactions. And so for first order reactions, we already know that the rate of the reaction is going to be dependent on the concentration of a single reactant raised to the first power. Um, and we can determine that experimentally. And so we're given a little sample reaction right here where we have reactant A decomposing into products. And there might be a reactant B, but it is zero order. It does not affect the rate of the reaction. We know that we can write a rate law that looks like this. Rate is equal to K um, multiplied by the concentration of A raised to the first power. Um, and um, we also know that we could calculate the average rate of disappearance of this. It's the change in concentration over the change in time. Okay, so this is first order. Now, um, one of the things that um, is interesting is that we can use calculus to um, to calculate the rate at any point during a reaction. We don't we don't just have to necessarily work on um, uh, initial rates um, of appearance or disappearance. We can do it at any time, um, and the integrated rate law shows us how to do that. Now I'm not going to show you how to integrate this. It does talk about it in the book. Um, we're just going to use the formula that's already been integrated for us. And this is the formula that's provided to you on your equation sheet. And um, so let's talk about what it is. First off, the formula is natural log of A at time minus natural log of A um, initially equals negative K being um, um, the rate law constant multiplied by time. What does this all mean? Well, let's kind of break it down here real quickly. Um, and so the concentration of A, so what we have here, this is going to be the concentration of our reactant A at some time. And uh, we'll either be, either be determining that time or we'll be given that time. Um, this, little, uh, this little subscript here lets us know this is the initial concentration. We also like to call that the starting concentration. Um, K, we know, is the rate law constant. And T is time. And we want to make sure that our time um, matches the rate law constant time. And we'll see that more um, coming up. But if, if our rate law constant is in seconds, negative first, and our time is in minutes, we need to convert minutes to seconds so everything cancels out nice and neat. So we'll, we'll get into that. Um, just taking this equation, again, this is the equation as it's given to us on the equation sheet in the back of our periodic table. It's provided with you, provided for you on the AP test. Um, it's sometimes it, it nice to solve this for um, the concentration at time because it's often what is being asked of us is um, what's the concentration after a certain amount of time, although sometimes we're actually asked to solve for the time as well. Um, and so here I'm going to do two sample problems, one solving for each one, and, and talk you through this, how we, how we figure this out. So here comes sample problem number one. We have the decomposition of dimethyl ether, CH3, 2, O, 510 degrees uh, Celsius. It's a first order process, so we can use this um, first order integrated rate law. There is a different um, integrated rate law for second order. We'll talk about that one another day. Um, they give us um, the rate law constant as 6.8 times 10 to the negative fourth, and I did leave the unit off there. It should be seconds negative first. The initial pressure is 135 torr. What is the partial pressure after 1,420 seconds? So they may have given this to us in minutes. Um, we would have to convert, but it's seconds there, and we have a rate law constant having seconds, and so we're good on this one. And so let's um, let's take a look at what we can do here. Um, we are looking for the partial pressure after a certain time, so that's going to be the concentration of this gas. And so we're going to go ahead and use the reaction as as it is solved up here, which will be nice and convenient. So we're going to do natural log of our dimethyl ether, and this is going to be at time, is going to be equal to negative kT plus the natural log of our dimethyl ether, and 
that's going to be initially. And so we just have to plug some values in here from the problem. So um, we know that um, our rate law constant is given to us in the problem. We have to make sure that's negative. We do have a negative sign there. So um, we have 6.8 times 10 to the negative fourth seconds negative first. And we are going to multiply that by the time. In this case, the time was 1,420 seconds. Notice that we have a seconds uh, unit there and a seconds unit there. So we don't have to do any conversions. If we had a minutes and a seconds, again, like I said before, we'd have a conversion. We're going to add this to the natural log of the initial concentration. Now, in this case, the initial concentration is going to be 135 tor. And this is all equal to the natural log of um, our dimethyl ether. So that's important. So we're going to run this through our calculator here. Um, and, and what I get is, at the end, I get 3.94 natural log dimethyl ether. Now, that is not the end. Now, we need to solve this for just the concentration of CH3-2O dimethyl ether. So what we're going to do is we are going to take the inverse of the natural log. And um, on my calculator, at least, the inverse is just I have to do second natural log, which turns out to be the E of X key. Always nice to have a bell in one of these videos. Um, and so that's going to be um, E raised to the 3.94, because I'm going to plug that right in. And when I take the inverse, and this gives me 51. And the answer is going to be in Tor. And so that's our answer there. Um, after um, uh, 1,420 seconds, um, the, the partial pressure has decomposed down to only 51 torr. So that's one of the ways um, we can use the integrated rate law. Now, let's take a look at another problem here that solves for time. Um, same exact thing, only different, if you know what I mean. OK, so we have a sample problem. We have a decomposition of N2O5. It's a first order process. Um, give us a balanced equation right here, although the balanced equation doesn't really help us too much. It's, it's there. It's there. It's good. Okay. Um, and so we have a rate law constant given to us, 6.93. There's our K. Um, we are given our initial concentration. This is concentration initially. We're given a final concentration. This is going to be our concentration um, at some time. So it looks like we're going to be solving for time. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, the first order um, integrated rate law, but I'm going to I'm going to go off of how it's written on um, on the equation sheet. Oops, sorry about that. So on the equation sheet, it's given to me like this. It's given to me just like this. And so I like it in this form because um, it's easier just to plug some values in. So um, essentially, I'm just going to solve this for k, just like that. And so um, let's plug some values in here and, and work with this. So we're going to do natural log of the concentration um, at time, which is going to be 0 0.0353, um, minus the natural log of the concentration initially, which is 0.1. And we're going to divide all of that by, um, and I totally made a mistake up there, and I, I, I see my mistake now. I, I solved it for k, and I was given k. I don't want to solve it for k. I want to solve it for time. So let's throw k down here below. Cross it out like that. Um, and so we're going to put 6.93 times 10 to the negative third seconds negative first is equal to negative time. Um, and so what happens is, um, I, I will tell you, when you plug this through your calculator, I don't do this all at once. I'll, I'll just do this portion first. I'll do this portion second. I'll subtract those two, and then I'll divide. I um, want to get that out of the way first. And so when I run this through my calculator, what I get is negative 150 um, seconds is equal to negative time. And so obviously, time is going to be equal to 150 seconds. Try that out. Run that through your calculator. and. Um, Double check that you get the same answer and uh, make sure that you, uh, you do. That's tonight's homework.